Hello, all. welcome to PMS Bazaar Podcast. This is Akshay Menon, analyst at PMS Bazaar. Along with me, we have Mr. Anil Rebo, who is the esteemed investment professional, author, and author. He founded Bright Horizons Group in 2003 and currently holds the position of CIO at Bright Horizons PMS and a fund manager for selected schemes. He is the CFA and MBA holder from ICFAI. Bright Horizons manage AUM around or closer to 900 crores. So without any delay, let's have him for the quarterly update for the quarter one of 2023. Hello, sir. Yeah, hi, excellent. So let me ask you ask my first question. What was your overview for the previous quarter and how do you feel the market has responded? If you could elaborate on quarter earnings. Yeah, India's listed corporate earnings were reasonably healthy for the last quarter of the previous uh, fiscal, despite uncertainties and you know the global landscape. Uh, we also saw that incremental earnings were almost entirely driven by financials and auto, uh, while metals uh, ended up dragging. Uh, banks, the numbers continued to be strong, uh, driven by robust credit growth momentum, uh, especially you know in the retail and SME segments. Uh, and recovery in the corporate uh, loan segment. Uh, there were also stable margins and we saw some bit of improvement in asset quality. Uh, autos, on the other hand, volumes grew across segments um, on a year-on-year basis and, you know, barring two, uh, two-wheeler, uh, sorry, sorry, barring the two-wheelers, uh, it remained relatively flat. Uh, uh, technology, uh, on the other hand, the performance of IT companies was mixed. Uh, mid caps also ended up uh, outperforming large caps with you know stronger uh, revenue growth. So, in an, uh, all in all, I think it's been a reasonably good quarter. Uh, market scale new highs with earnings coming in healthier, you know, and uh, the bit of an improving macro indicators. Uh, investor sentiment also improved. So, I guess it's all pointing towards a bit of an optimistic outlook. Thank you, sir. It is. And uh, if you could elaborate on the investment philosophy and the process that's going to contribute to the performance of your funds, what, what is the, the secret mantra that you follow? Yeah, so, uh, you know, a key part of uh, it has been, you know, our in- investment philosophy. Uh, we have uh, uh, the philosophy is about striving to deliver a superior risk-adjusted return. Okay, and we also have a robust risk management methodology uh, and a structured investing process. Right, and uh, we also go through and do a, an in-depth fundamental and quantitative analysis, uh, for, for which we have a bit of a framework. And I think putting that together, you know, and and working and delivering towards it is what has helped us. You know. Uh, uh, deliver performance and uh, you know the performance also has been uh, pretty consistent and I, I give a good reason of it for you know the process that we have uh, we also do you know have a bit of a uh, framework where we say okay how do we look at identifying you know the, in the future leaders uh, and, and which help us you know uh, identify you know multi-baggers and so there's a framework you know by which we sort of work there again to try and you know get uh, you know good businesses uh, at a price that we are comfortable with and I think so this growth uh, multi-bagger framework is something that you know uh, helps us also to you know pick up some of those leaders and you know where we are able to do that consistently is, is where we also see returns. Okay. Thank you, sir. And when you say about the multi bagger returns, I think that's a, a key thing for any investor to look upon for a fund. Uh, most of your funds, just like let me super value or Kenyan or Flexi Cap or this India business leader, most of them have given a better return than their respective uh, benchmark. So if you could explain like how they are different and how they approach from uh, the different from each of these categories. 
Yeah, like I just mentioned, right? Our process and uh, you know how we go about it, and and the frameworks that we've developed have helped us be consistent in our performance. Uh, so just detailing that a little bit, you know, uh, we filter businesses with you know sol- solid fundamentals, right? And uh, you know, from the whole universe, then we come down to uh, a smaller set of stocks, right? Uh, subsequently, we you know, scrutinize these for, uh, you know, uh, all operating metrics. Uh, we have created a bit of a ranking methodology, you know, based on which we, uh, you know, give scores to companies uh, based on, you know, various parameters and weightages that we've come up as part of this methodology. Uh, and and uh, finally, you know, we have, uh, you know, valuation metrics in place. And, and, and like I said, uh, uh, growth at a price is something that we like to uh, look at. So, so the last part of it is also looking at valuations and uh, you know where they go out of sync with what our views and expectations are. Then we also look to exit them. Uh, but fundamentally, we also follow a bit of a, a bottoms-up approach of stock picking. You know where uh, you know we look at uh, various metrics which come into uh, our screening criteria. And uh, subsequently, you know, um, we, we search for stocks which can also uh, say either be turnaround stories, can be potential disruptors, and have you know good moats uh, for their businesses, which sort of uh, ensure that they are able to consistently deliver, you know, uh, on profit growth. Uh, so, so that so those sort of put together help us, uh, you know, to come out with uh, more consistency in returns. And and uh, but yeah, I would give the process orientation as one of you know the key drivers for the performance. Yeah, actually, with your answer, I got to understand about the uh, how a right horizons approach uh, a stock for the selection into their portfolio. That was very clear. But if I could ask, what is the exit strategy right horizons for it to exit from a particular stock? Is there any particular exit strategy that you have, sir? Yeah, actually, uh, one of the methodologies that we have is what we call as the right horizons pendulum, and and that is more to do with you know uh, entry and exits. Um, so, like like one said, uh, when when we enter itself, we look at what is the valuation and price, and based on that enter, and subsequently, if we find you know valuations skyrocket and go to levels that we are uncomfortable with, then that is something that we exit even if we love the company, right? Because uh, as part of a risk management as well, you know, know, that's a practice that, you know, we've been following and it has worked well. The number of companies where, you know, they are fantastic companies, they did very well, you know, we exited and and subsequently they either stagnated or some of them even came down. So so that, uh, so exits have been a bit of a strength on our side. The second point of exits that come in is when, you know, because we track, uh, every stock, quarter by quarter, all you know the results, uh, attend the calls or meet the companies, etc. And and if we find the inconsistency in what is being said, uh, or we find some deterioration in performance or outlook, uh, so various factors, you know, uh, we may also take a call, you know, to exit the stock uh, or you know lower the weightage, you know, depending on all of these. So so again. Uh, exit also has a very clear uh, process to it okay and that is something you know which uh, has helped us because uh, what happens is many times you know uh, there's a temptation to get carried away you know with with all the positive things that are going behind the stocks right so so the process helps us stay away from it and and take uh, rational decisions yeah absolutely sir and uh, if I could ask if there is any notable investment decisions that were made in your strategies in recent and or in previous quarter, and if you could throw some light on how the portfolio has, you know, stand up for the in, in spite the market was quite the time. So you know, how did the uh, how did the portfolio stand up in volatility? If you could give some examples. Yes. Yeah, so. Uh... See, uh, there are basically, you know, a number of stocks. So, so for example, again, uh, since you're talking about stocks, I also cover what are some of the actions that we took, you know, in the recent quarter, etc. 
right uh, uh, because some of it is also we look at it based on a slightly macro view and outlook uh, there uh, and in one of uh, the the areas that you know we focused on was moving over uh, some bit of the weightage and in, in strategies like flexi cap uh, from large caps to uh, small and mid caps and and uh, that was based on our analysis and we actually came out with a report as well uh, where uh, and it was a contrarian uh, view at that point of time because there was a lot of volatility you know uh, around uh, silicon valley, valley bank and you know uh, it is spreading on to credit suisse and europe etc and india also we had uh, you know the adani overhang uh, so uh, we did say that we think you know markets will do well for this financial year as well as uh, a move towards small and mid caps and there were various uh, reasons you know and, and where we analyzed and uh, data that we analyzed which brought us to this conclusion so based on that you know we did move out of number of large cap stocks right from bharati etel maruti sun pharma etc okay uh, and and we ended up moving to small and mid caps i don't want to name the sort of companies you know that we bought in but, but uh, we won boarded nbfc's uh, financial services companies uh, some bit on the retail side specialty retail okay and uh, newer themes that we think will uh, drive the you know bull cycle and continuing uh, performance you know for the period to come okay thank you so that was a, a, a brief answer for the question they asked So, if you are to compare the Q1 of 2022 and Q1 of 2023, do you, do you think which quarter performed well over the right horizons? Yeah. So, uh, not only for right horizons, I think for the market as well. You know, the sectors. Uh, Q1 FY22 was, you know, uh, IT and metals uh, were in the limelight. Okay, and uh, they were showing strong growth. uh and they were moving up they were misses some bit you know from the financial uh, services space and uh, private banks showed some slippage uh, from the retail segment and also nbfc's uh, reported sort of uh, below par earnings uh, you know uh, as collections got a little impacted from uh, this uh, the covid uh, type of situations okay and also uh, some bit of stress uh, Uh, building up from you know segments across auto capital goods and you know uh, telecom also uh, results were impacted uh, you know by the pandemic so uh, so it was a bit of a uh, not so easy quarter but uh, the tables turned over in the first quarter of uh, this uh, fy23 and uh, uh, so so the corporate earnings growth was primarily led by banking financial services Uh, bfsi uh, so, uh, rather the bfsi sector okay and uh, uh, on the other hand it pharma uh, and some of the cement uh, sectors etc were impacted okay so so it was a bit of a turn around in some of the sectors which did uh, really well you know uh, came back and did poorly as we sort of went forward uh, uh, but yes the bfsi sector has improved structurally uh npas also are at a better place and we are seeing that uh, more sustainable you know earnings growth uh, coming from you know various segments uh, you know of the s so so all in all i think uh, uh we think that uh, q1 uh, 2023 uh you know uh, has been uh, good and probably setting up you know for some better growth as we move forward Yeah, even the you know the markets are all time high now. Yeah. One more thing, Alex, because that we are coming to the last part of the question session. Uh, the last question is that what is your outlook on upcoming quarter earnings of 2023, and have you seen any changes expecting in the portfolio? Yeah, so uh, I think the things have stabilized a lot, and uh, the domestic uh, macro environment also. Uh, is strong and you know uh, various indicators also are sort of uh, indicating in that direction yes there's been a bit of a cool off in uh, key commodities which has helped because it has moderated inflation uh, it'll probably uh, see hopefully interest rates come down okay of course yields did take a bit of a breather out there okay and uh, so so that would sort of uh, be positive 
you know for companies on the borrowing side and to also you know help spur growth uh, growth in uh, earnings we think will come from um, bfsi and auto uh, we think consumer and it will also report uh, you know strong uh, healthy growth uh, while you know metals and cement could be a little muted even though say they may imp- they are likely to improve from you know the past uh, quarters uh, the sectors based on domestic demand we believe will you know uh, do better than say export oriented segments okay uh, so so we think uh, the domestic economy you know will will do a lot better than that makes us bullish on you know uh, say building materials uh, autos and auto ancillary and salary uh, banking sectors okay and and we believe they will continue to drive uh, earnings growth uh, and uh, possibly they could also outperform their peers uh, on you know the market cap side i think small and mid caps uh, will continue to do well uh, relative to large caps in our view uh, and and hopefully like i said uh, interest rates could uh, get cut as we you know uh, go forward if inflation sort of uh, continues to sort of uh, be where it is uh, and uh, so so uh, you know we all in all we believe that uh, you know we are uh, or we like small and mid caps and we also overweight there uh, and we have we sort of looking to increase weights and in financials and autos uh mid cap it is another place that uh, we like uh, and you know consumer uh, and newer themes so one believes that our portfolio are reasonably well positioned uh, for the uh, cycle that is uh, coming up and uh, we had as part of that like i mentioned we did proactively uh, move our you know allocations toward mid caps and portfolios which allowed us to do that as well as we did reach out to clients and uh, investors to say that maybe the mid and small caps are the uh, places to be and uh, uh, we believe that uh, growth at a reasonable value uh, you know multi bagger framework that we have will hopefully help capitalize and continue to deliver uh, superior returns Uh, thank you sir that was a very detailed answer and thank you for your time uh, that will come to the end of the session i think i'm sure the, uh, the insightful talks that you shared in this interview would help the investors know about the previous quarter happenings and they, they can also easily focus on what's, what's going to happen in the next of 2023 as well so we also gave a brief about the right options how they can you know uh, see a positive interest in the also in the next uh, in next year in the upcoming months thank you sir thank you for that Yeah, thanks you, Akshara. It was nice talking to you. Thanks.